Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Skoog and I'm a product manager for Maple. Today I'll be walking you through some of the new features we have for you in Maple 2017. So Maple already, as you know, it has a long history of providing you a comprehensive set of mathematical tools as well as having really great extensive usability features. And I I'd like to think that Maple 2017 really continues that tradition and adds a lot of improvements and additions that you'll appreciate no matter how you use Maple. So there's a lot to discuss about Maple 2017. And unfortunately, I won't have time to talk about everything in today's talk. Uh, but specifically, I'm going to focus in on a couple of key areas. So you'll see me talking about things like cloud package management, so how to install a Maple package from the cloud. I'll talk about things like building interactive plots using the Plot Builder. I'm also going to talk about things like our new visualization tools, including geographic data. There's also updates to our workbook file format that I want to share with you. And lastly, I'll walk through a couple more examples out of advanced math just to round out our talk. Before I jump in, though, I will mention that I won't be taking any questions during the presentation today. But if you do have any questions, enter those into the chat box on the right side of your window, and we'll address those at the end of the talk. So let's jump right in. Packages in the Maple Cloud. And this is a pretty big feature for it. It's, it's one of those features that can really, it comes around once every couple of years, and it can really change the face of everything you do in Maple. So I'll start up here in the top corner. So you can actually see this is my icon. I'm logged into my account. Uh, and I'm logged into the Maple Cloud from here. So what we can do now is we can go up to this button, and we can browse the documents, math apps, or even packages we now store inside of the Maple Cloud. If I click any one of these, this will bring up the Maple Cloud window. From here on the right side or the left side, you can see public, math app, and doc package packages all listed in this list here. So the idea with this list is that anything that's shown in the packages list is something that you can add on and install to your existing Maple version. So for example, if I was to scroll through this list, which includes applications for things like encryption, optimization, I see there's some file networking or file tools there as well. Anything that you want to experiment with here, you can simply just click on, and this will open up that package workbook inside of your edition of Maple. So the, the uh, version I've clicked right now, this is Maple Google Maps and Geocoding. And, and this is an add-on package that just talks to the Google Maps API. Once you open it up, this is just like any other package in Maple. I can scroll through this. I can see what this package is and what it does. I can see that there are two commands in Google Maps here, so find, find long lad, uh, as well as get map. And you can see here, this just allows you to import some maps into, into Maple. If I go back to our web view for the Maple Cloud, you'll see that there are two buttons over here. So the first one is this kind of eyeball looking one, and that's to view it. And that's what we also did by just clicking here. If you click on the button right beside that, that makes it possible to install the package. So what install means in this context is that you are asking Maple to go out to our Maple Cloud, fetch the latest version of that package, and install it to your local disk. So once you've done that, you'll get this completion notice from the pop-up. And if you go to a new document inside of Maple, I can now run with Google Maps and have that functionality native inside of Maple. So this is really, it's an exciting new feature, but it's an exciting new feature that makes it possible to do a lot more inside of Maple. So this Google Maps package is just one of these 15 that we have listed in, this, in the list right now. You can see there's a lot more here. So I would definitely recommend everybody to go out, have a look at what we've got in the Maple Cloud, because there may be something here that can really help you and add some value to the classroom that you may not have, have had before. Now the flip side of all this, of course, is that uh, we've tried to work a little bit to make it a little bit easier to author packages and author content inside of Maple. So again, I'll just open up the Google Maps app and just jump over here. If, if you've got some content that you want to share with your students, share with your peers, uh, uploading it is as simple as going to File, Save to Cloud, or going over to the new cloud icon and just choosing Save to Cloud. Once you do that, you'll be presented with this new Maple Cloud dialog. And from this dialog, you can specify the Maple package type, uh, the group you want to submit it to, language, authors, tags, and any other metadata that you want to include with this package. 
So this stuff is going to be really, really important once you actually bring this into the cloud because eventually what we're hoping with the cloud is it's going to be a very immersive uh, environment where you're going to be able to query for tags, look for this metadata, and just be able to pull apart any one of these Maple packages based on this metadata information. So this is all there. There's also a new package called Package Tools, which is available that makes it a lot easier to work with, with Code of Maple. I'll also just do a quick tangent here and share with you the fact that this package itself is a Maple workbook. So this, the workbook was introduced in Maple 2016 as a new file format. And any new package that we upload to the cloud is now stored inside of a Maple workbook. So what this means is you can take your Maple package, you can take documentation, you can take your help files, you can package this all up into one file and then just share it, have people install it and work with it. So these are all great tools that just really make it really easy for you to share and to install and update your, your, uh, your copies of Maple. All right, now I could probably talk about that for a while, but let me move on and walk you through the next feature I wanted to share, which is the plot builder. So the, the idea of the plot builder is that we wanted to give you an easier to use, easy to use interface for generating a, a wide variety of plots inside of Maple. So if I have an expression, we'll say something like x cubed. To start the plot builder, what you want to do is go to right click on the expression, go plots, and then plot builder. What you'll then see is you'll see the plot builder context panel. It'll slide in from the, the right side of your screen and it'll make it possible for you to modify attributes of a generated plot. So the idea is basically that anything that is shown or available from a, a plot command is completely accessible using this plot builder context panel. All right, so that was just a momentary WebEx hiccup here, but. Uh, so basically, we see the, the context panel has now slid in from the, from the right, and I'm able to choose from this list the type of plot I want to generate. So I can generate a 2D plot, a polar plot, a 3D conformal plot, anything that is essentially related, that, that makes sense for this expression, uh, we can generate a plot for that. So we'll do a 2D plot to begin with, and then you'll see below, these are all the plot options that are relevant for this plot command. So I'll start by just changing the color of the line to blue-green, and this one usually shows pretty well, so I'll just change the thickness up to a higher value. Uh, we can play with the line style if we wanted to. We can basically modify any programmatic plot option that you can think of all through this interface. We can also go back. We can change this to a 3D conformal plot if we want to change the way that we're looking at the expression itself. So this is what this looks like as a 3D conformal plot. One important uh, note here is that once we change the plot type, the actual options that are displayed to you in the context panel change as well. So here we can see we now have options for different colors. So we have color one, color two. We can change the style here. Thickness is still works here, but it just means the thickness of the lines on this conformal plot. We can change 3D specific options under this 3D options menu. We can experiment with new color tools and new color palettes using the color option section. So here we can switch over to the, to the nautical color palette and change over to using some different colors that we may not have used before. Basically everything that you could imagine uh, and it may not have even, even thought about uh, is accessible through this plot builder. So let me show you one more example with a different expression. We'll do x squared plus y squared. I'll again right click plots plot builder same way as we did before. And this will slide in that same plot builder as we saw before. It comes in from the right side of your window. An important part of this too is that um, even if uh, you generate multiple plot builders in the same worksheet, what you'll find is that you can go back through any one of the other plot builders and modify each one of those previous plot builder uh, created plots individually. I'll show you what that means in a second, but for now let's create a quick 3D plot here of x squared plus y squared. And uh, we'll just modify some of the style here. I usually like to make this either a surface or a wireframe. And we can just scroll around. We can experiment with this plot. We can still use all of the tools that we see here on the plot toolbar. Those are all still valid. But what we're doing here is we're just using the plot builder to experiment with different options for the plot structure itself. 
Now, another important part of the plot builder, and this is probably one of the coolest parts for me, is if we press this button here that says show command, this will pop open a box here that has the full command that lets you regenerate this plot again and again. So if I go down to the next line and insert this code, that's the exact maple command to generate this plot. So in a lot of ways, you can use the plot builder as a way to generate your plots, to experiment with different options, but you can also use it to learn the Maple language itself. So it's, it's kind of a great tool for plotting, for learning the language. I, I think this is one of these tools that comes around every so often, and we've really done a lot, we've spent a lot of time thinking about the usability here and making this one just really work for people. So I think this one is, is certainly one that I think uh, most people will be happy to see inside of Maple, uh, and we're hoping that you quite enjoy working with. But let's move on. I've talked now about a couple of different plots using the plot builder, but plotting, I can't say it enough. Plotting is probably the most important thing that people do inside of Maple. Uh, if, if you look at any one of our help searches, you'll see that plotting comes up right near the top of the list whenever we look at some statistics on it. So plotting is vital. And what we like to do for every release of Maple is add in new plots uh, that have additional coverage for areas that we may not have coverage for before. So in this release, you'll see new plots, things like signal processing, as well as statistics, data analysis. There's some new plots in uh, uh, thermophysical data. There's also some new underlying tools and color tools and so on. So there's a lot of really cool new commands that work with. But I think the interesting stuff comes out of the addition of plot annotations to Maple. So let me show you an example of what exactly I mean here. So this is an application that is shipping with Maple. It's called Live Earthquake Data. What this does is it downloads live earthquake data from the USGS website, plots the location and magnitude on a world map. Now, I'm not going to get ahead of, head, too far ahead of myself, but world maps are my next topic of, uh, of discussion. Uh, so, and it's actually also what you see behind here. But more importantly, what I want to highlight here is the fact that if I hover over any one of these points within this visualization, I can return, I can return information on these points. So in this case, I've got a plot annotation which tells me northern mid-Atlantic ridge with magnitude 4.7 for this specific point. We can scroll over here and we can go to the north of Canada. Here we have another earthquake up here, in, uh, up in none of it in Canada. So magnitude 4.4. We can scroll down here. The point really is, is that we're able to generate annotations which convey more information than you previously could just with this visualization. At the same time, you might not want to show an annotation for each one of these points. Your plot might just get a little bit too crowded. So this is a really important way, and a great way for you to extend Maple's data visualization techniques. And let me show you a couple more of these, just because these are, these are really cool. So here's, a, here's another plot we've generated. This is the color of gold, silver, copper alloys. And it's displayed on something called a ternary plot. So this has all been generated for us. This is an application you can view in Maple 2017. We can just scroll through here, and we can see the composition by weight of gold, silver, and copper. So I like that one. I think the final example I want to show you for plot annotations, though, is probably the most requested one, uh, which is for contour plots. So I think one thing we've heard numerous times from, from our users is for contour plots, they want to be able to see what each one of these contour lines means. So with plot annotations, you can now hold your mouse over one of these lines, and you can see the values of these contour lines and contour plots. This is one of these features that we've kind of been looking at for a while, and I think that it adds a lot of value to Maple to be able to just now add in these annotations. Geographic data. So previously, we saw earthquake data. We saw the world map. What uh, this is all a part of is a new package in Maple 2017 called, uh, it's for world map projections. So this is an application, this is called world map projections. Here I can go through and I can change and go through all the different new plots that we have for world maps. So these are all the different projections you can view for, for a globe, for the, for the world maps. So we can scroll through all these, we can add points, we can do a lot of different animations. We can do a lot of really cool stuff directly with these plot projections. But what's, what's also a part of this world map package is a large collection of geographic data. And 
what we'll see if I open up this example here for chloropleth maps is that we're able to uh, use custom data, but we're also able to use built-in data, which is all backed by the GeoNames database, uh, to generate a lot of really cool and interesting visualizations. So in this specific application, and I'll just run this one through, so this is using this new data sets world map package. Uh, we're establishing some colors. And then we're just doing a, a color, a, a plot of, of Europe. And in this case, this is showing you a choropleth map, which is basically attributing colors to gradients. So in this case, this is a, a plot here of the number of children per female, so fertility rates, uh, for the countries in Europe. And basically, the lighter color is a higher rate, the darker color is a lower rate. So this is a sample data from, from 2015, but you can imagine that you can do any type of plot like this for world data, you can do it for specific continents, you can do it for just country data as well. There's a lot of experimentation, there's a lot of really cool stuff you're gonna be able to put together uh, using this functionality inside of Maple. And this is all a part of the data sets package in Maple, so it links up with what we've got as existing functionality for being able to work with uh, built-in data sets for country data and now geographic data. So there's a, a great variety of information here to look at and vi to visualize. So changing gears entirely. Password protected content. I mentioned before that the Maple Maple 2016 saw the introduction of the workbook. And uh, one of the first features we were asked about after we introduced the workbook was uh, the ability to lock content within the workbook. So I've opened up the workbook navigator tab over here. Here you can see I've got two worksheets stored within my workbook. One is called main, which is the worksheet you see in front of you. And the other one is called ideal brand and cycle. And there's a little lock right beside brand and cycle. If I try to open this up, it's, Maple's actually gonna ask me for a password. So if I don't know my password, it won't actually let you go in. It's, it's locked content. If you do know the password, then you can enter in your password. In this case, it's just Maple that I used. And it'll allow, then allow you to actually interact to open up that content and have a look at it. So the idea is pretty simple here. You can just go up to content inside of the work, Maple workbook, check or uncheck lock document, and it's, it's locked or unlocked for you. What's also great about being able to lock content in this way is that you're able to lock content, but at the same time treat that content like a black box and run information through it. So in this case, I can use the document tools run worksheet command, and I can point that at the worksheet I've got stored inside of my workbook. I can pass it some parameters. I'll just press return here. And we'll see that using the worksheet as a black box, locked or unlocked, and returning a result to us. So what this means for, for you is you can basically store some proprietary code in a, an attachment inside your Maple workbook, have a user still be able to access it though, so it could be a procedure, it could be some Maple code, it could be a proprietary worksheet that you don't want anybody to see. So the, kind of the options here are limitless, uh, but you are still able to access it in some way as a black box. So it's really kind of protecting your IP while still allowing access to it by whatever means you dictate. All right, let's talk advanced math. This is uh, usually the most important part, and this is one, the one that kind of touches on the majority of our Maple user base. Uh, this has kind of been Maple's longest uh, living strength, is its kind of abilities to work with advanced math, and, uh, and it's kind of its roots as well. And it's something we always like to go back to, and we like to add a lot of functionality for. So in this release, kind of as, as a very quick list, what you'll see is uh, new abilities to find exact solutions to more PDs with boundary conditions. You can find new limits, uh, solve more integrals, perform new graph theory computations, calculate more group properties, work with new hypergeometric functions. There's a ton of stuff here. I won't talk about all of it because there's just too much. But what I will show you is I'll just show you another workbook with a couple of examples. So here are some examples that we may not have been able to solve previously. So this was one coming from PDEs with boundary conditions. So in this case, I'm going to consider the following problem with the initial condition as followed. And then we use the PD solve command in order to get a result. Let's run a couple more here. Here's series and limit. So in this case, the asymptote and limit commands can now handle asymptotic cases of 
for the incomplete gamma function, where both arguments tend to infinity and their quotient remain finite. Press return here, here's our result. Integration. Here again are a couple problems that uh, highlight, actually in this case, changes that we've made from April 2017 to really beef up uh, the assume, assuming commands. Uh, this, is, this is really something that we've spent a lot of time working on and uh, really do have benefits that are far ranging for, for Maple. We've also been working in graph theory. So here's a small collection of some new graphs you'll be able to generate uh, within Maple 2017. And then uh, group theory, here's another example. This is computing the character tables of finite groups. And we're using the new character table command, which generates a table that you can easily read off the, the characteristics. As I said, there's a ton of new content inside of Maple 2017. I can't cover it all in one talk. We'd have to spend uh, you know, a talk per subject area here to really do this stuff justice. So for now, I'm just going to basically pass that along. If there is more, uh, if you're looking for more information about this, it's actually probably a good time to just take a quick tangent and say, inside of Maple, whenever you want to know what's new, you can just go up to the Help menu and go to What's New. This will bring up the What's New page that you're basically seeing in front of you, the one that I'm working from. But if you go to any one of these subpages here, so we'll go to Advanced Mathematics, you'll see a lot more than what I just shared with you. There's tons of examples here that cover advanced math and lots of other subjects that I just won't have time to discuss today. So again, that's all in our What's New section. You'll find it in the Help table of contents, and there's a lot more here. Let's move from advanced math into engineering. In previous years, we spent a lot of time working on adding good content. So we've been adding things like our math apps, our applications, our examples. But for this release, what we wanted to do was we wanted to go back to basics and think about what content would be really benefit uh, an engineer as they're coming into Maple for the first time. So the new Maple portal for engineers, it really does this. It tells you how to use Maple from the ground up. It talks about the UI, the environment. It talks about data analysis, visualization. It gives you some applications, some examples. There's sections here on physical and scientific data, math and programming, specialized topics. This is really meant to be the place to go to be, just get started when you're getting started from the perspective of an engineering uh, course or even as, an, as a seasoned engineer. Uh, just to give you an idea of some of the content that's in here, I'll open up the Maple Application Gallery. And each one of these is a section. You can kind of go in here and you can browse any one of these subsections for engineering. And you'll find there's great content here that walks you through all this different content we have available for you inside of Maple. Uh, just for fun, I'll open up one of these examples, just because this does show off some of the new content we worked on last year, which was the new package for thermophysical data. So this is an application we call the efficiency of the Rankine cycle. The application in this case talks about the problem. And then we run through some sample problems. In this case, we go all the way down. And here is a temperature entropy chart that we've generated for, uh, for this specific problem. So there's a lot of great content here. Spend some time. Find a corner that's really relevant to you. And you'll, I'm sure you can find some good content here. Uh, if you're looking for it, the uh, Live Earthquake Data app is also linked directly from within this engineering portal. So you can find that under Earth and Building Science. All right, clickable tools. We're kind of hitting right near the end of, of our talk now. And what I always like to do near the end is, is to talk about some of the kind of more general facilities that we've been adding to this release. And uh, that usually covers things like hotkeys and clickable tools. So the context menu is kind of one of the best ways we have to make it very easy for you to access the Maple library and the Maple language. So for this release, we've added uh, basically the full signal processing package as well as curve fitting options for two to column matrices and data frames to the, to the right click context menu. So if you have something here like we have a signal here or we have a data frame, you can right click and then apply a wide variety of tasks directly to that, command, to that expression. So this is a great way if you want to just, if you don't want to learn, learn what the code is, you can just right click on something and apply something like an autocorrelation function here for a signal. Or you can go down here to a data frame and you can do some curve fitting with the information you have sitting in your data frame. So the context menu really makes it simple for you to work in Maple. And hotkeys, I think this is one of these areas that I personally use hotkeys a lot when I'm using Maple. So this is why I always want to draw people's attention to the new ones. 
Uh, in the previous releases, we've been working on this concept of being able to zoom in and zoom out. So within Maple, you can now use these zoom in and zoom out buttons to more easily zoom in on your Maple worksheet. But we now also have Alt plus or Alt minus as hotkeys that allow you to zoom in or zoom in on your Maple worksheet. Uh, another new shortcut key that's pretty handy, I find, is Alt S. If I press that on my keyboard, you'll see that I pop up here to the help search. So from here, I can search up something like the diff command, we'll say, or in this case, I could also look at the bottom there for more data sets. But it's Alt S, and it pops you into the help search, and then you're able to open up the help system from there. Now, speaking of the, of the help system, let me open that up for a second here. And I'll just go into details here of the Maple help system, just any random help page here. When I work in the Maple help system, I tend to have one help page open. But a little while ago, I discovered this option in Maple's option settings that allowed me to right click and to open a separate help page in a different window. So we've actually made this the default for Maple. So if I now right click on another hyperlink in the Maple help window, I can open this in a separate window and now have multiple help windows open at once. And for me, I just find this to be really, really beneficial just because I often have at least one or two commands on the go at the same time. And it's just great being able to put those together, have two help windows open, and being able to just jump back and forth between the two. So again, this is nothing that was really new, but I always want to just kind of talk about some of this stuff just because we've tried to make life a little bit easier for you as you're working inside of Maple. So that leads me full circle. I'm right back at the beginning. There's a lot more we can talk about. There's a lot more we can cover inside of Maple 2017, and I'm sure we will in separate videos. Uh, there's a couple of videos that we've already put together that talk about some of these areas in a little bit more detail than what we've worked in today. But uh, th there's so much here that we really just want to have this put in front of you. We want, hopefully, you to try out Maple 2017, experiment with things like there's new code generation for Swift, the graph theory extensions, all the work we've been doing for mathematical functions, partial differential equations, physics. There's a ton of functionality there that I haven't had a chance to talk about today that you'd really just be able to spend some time and really enjoy if you got there. Units is another one I didn't spend any time talking about today, but we've added a whole new sub package for units called Units Simple that make it just a little bit more intuitive to work away with units. So that leads me to my last slide, and we're going to start the question period in just a second. But uh, an important part of, of this presentation for us is just basically giving you options for staying connected. So first and foremost is our website, www.maplesoft.com. Go there. It has all this, all this and more. Like There's a ton of content on there. We've got resource centers for engineers, for students, for everyone. But also, don't forget about us on social media. So you'll see that our user, our user forum is mapleprimes.com. You'll, you'll be able to address, contact us through Facebook, through Twitter, through YouTube, through LinkedIn, through all the addresses that you see right below. So I think it's important to put these on here just because we, have, we are constantly adding new content. We're adding new videos. We're adding new blog posts. We're trying to kind of uh, add as much value as possible for you as a Maple user. So please visit us at these pages and, and do stay in touch. So at this point, I think I, I welcome up our moderator. And I think we have a few questions which are waiting for me. And hopefully, I can address all those. Hi. Hey. Um, first question here, uh, most popular question, where can we get a copy of this presentation? All right, I'll go back to my slide here, and I'll add an email address. This is always asked. So info at maplesoft.com is probably the best bet for this. I'm not sure if we're going to put this in our application center soon, but um, what we will be able to do is if you email us at info at maplesoft.com, uh, we'll be able to reach back, back out to you. We'll be able to get a copy of this worksheet to you. So I've added this to the worksheet. It's right in front of you. Uh, where can somebody get teaching materials and questions to use in Maple? Teaching materials and questions. So that's going back to our website again. So www.maplesoft.com. And I'll just go over to a browser now. I've got kind of a couple of these open here. And once you get to maplesoft.com, the best place to go for teaching resources is probably going to be the Teacher Resource Center. So if you go up to Support and Resources right here at the top, and uh, 
right under support and resources, you'll find that there is the teacher resource center as well as student help center and welcome center. The teacher resource center, it's filled with great content. There's a um, teaching concepts with maple section here. If you scroll down your list, and this, this features a whole bunch of examples taken directly from classrooms. So you see basically what you see here, differential calculus, integral calculus, differential equations. These are proven examples that show you how to use maple for, sub, for these subjects, but also how to teach these subjects using maple, so kind of both sides of the, of the equation. Uh, this is a fun question. What's your favorite small improvement to Maple 2017? There are always lots. Um, I feel guilty going back to the start and saying that this stuff, packages in the cloud, this may not be a small improvement, but just being able to log into my user account through, through Maple, having quick and easy access to my private files. So if I go over here to the Maple Cloud, I can open up my folder and see any of the content, because I keep a lot of my content stored directly in the cloud. I can just go over here to my private cloud and uh, view my, my stuff. So having that ease of access through the cloud icon here, that's just super easy. Uh, from there, being able to install a package, being able to get updates for that package, that stuff's completely invaluable for me. I think it's fantastic, and I can't talk about it enough. Cool. Um, I think this question is in regards to the geographical data. Um, how does this compare to ARC GIS? Uh, interesting question. Um, it's very different. So the question is, how does this compare to ArcGIS? Um, so I wouldn't say that the functionality we've added for world maps for Maple is at all in the GIS or geographical information systems, uh, like th that world. I think this is more kind of strictly for, for data visualization, uh, visualization of world projections and so on. I don't know if I necessarily, we haven't really added any custom tools that would be really of relevance to anybody with a workflow that would usually involve ArcGIS. Uh, I might be wrong there. This certainly isn't my subject area of expertise, but um, I would welcome anybody using these tools to try it out and uh, let us know what they, what they think. But um, yes, yeah, certainly I think it's more driven by things like what we saw before, being able to put together a world map and then do a data visualization where you're showing values on a world map or a, a country map, that type of thing. Um, how much is Maple 2017? I'm not allowed to give numbers. So you can certainly contact us at info at maplesoft.com. Uh, we would be happy to help you and to work out a quote that would be uh, relevant to whoever you are. So that's always a question that uh, I get asked. And I, the salespeople just don't trust me with numbers. So, um, When and where will we go more in depth to some of these features in Maple 2017? So certainly, I mentioned some of our social media. And I've got a couple of these open just for this exact, this exact question. If you go to youtube.com user MapleSoft video, we've got a playlist here called Maple 2017. Uh, the highlights video is three minutes long. It's even shorter than what I've done today. But then you'll see kind of other videos that are covering certain areas here. So plot creation, user plot builder, plot annotations, world maps. So a couple of these are shorter, but we're also adding lots of new content. Here's bivariate limits. So there's a 10 minute video here on bivariate limits. We're going to be adding more and more content to this YouTube channel as we go. But you'll find that any of the content we have that goes in more in depth through video would be here. If you're looking in product, don't go any further than going up to the help menu and looking at what's new. I think another pr great place to go would be our live webinars page, ah. where you could uh, see the upcoming events Yes. as well. Yeah, so that is under support and resources, and we have an events section. There we go, live webinars. And that's where you'll see new w webinars that are actually coming up in the, in the next little while. So this is kind of the, what we're doing with Maple 2017, is we're trying to promote it more, but we're also trying to talk about all these new features. So you'll see a lot of new events happening in the next couple months here. And what about performance improvements? Where can we see inf information on that? So performance improvements. I'm going to go back to the What's New in Maple 2017. And there is actually a page called Performance. So if you go to Performance, uh, this talks about specific commands that have seen their performance be, uh, be increased uh, or made faster. Um, some of these commands are kind of low-level commands that you'll, if you'll 
basically see that if one of these commands has been changed, it may impact all of your Maple usage. Uh, other commands may be kind of corner cases where we just kind of worked on one command that, that will only make that command faster. So I would certainly look through this page specifically. Uh, look and make sure, you know, see if there's anything here that's of relevance to you. Uh, but certainly performance is one of those things that every single release we get a little bit faster. So we do so through the library. We also do so through uh, optimizations on, the, on our Maple GUI as well, so our, our actual interface. I know you talked a lot about um, sharing packages. Um, can you talk a little bit about creating packages? Absolutely. So the question is about creating packages. So let me go back to the Maple Cloud for this one. So I'll go through the cloud here again. I'll go to the packages group. And I only, I'll, I'll do this one just because this, I've actually added a package to the package cloud myself. And this is a package called cluster analysis. So it's, it's working with uh, some clustering techniques. And it's kind of the start of a package for us. So if I open up this package in Maple, this will just take a second to load. But basically, once I've got this open, as I said before, the, the container for packages is a Maple workbook. So this isn't necessarily something new that's in 2017. It's something that we introduced in Maple 2016. But the functionality you see here, being able to put together a package and use it as, as a workbook it is really fundamental. This gives you a kind of a visual way of exploring packages, of adding your documentation, of adding your, uh, your examples, of adding your code, adding your help database, adding everything you need in one convenient place. So the workbook, in a lot of ways, is kind of your package creation central. You can put all your content in here. And, and the key step for making a package is really just save libbing a, a library directly back into the workbook. So it's a pretty straightforward thing to work with. So after that, we've also added a whole new package called package tools. And this is a bunch of new commands that we've added that make authoring packages a little bit easier. So there's tools for creation. There's tools for modifying the metadata. There's a lot of work that's gone into making it a little bit easier than it was before to, to make these new workbook packages. Awesome. Um, you talked a lot about the new plotting tools. Mm -hmm. Is there maybe a new plotting tool that you didn't mention? Or? I think we did a pretty good job of walking through all the plotting tools. There's always a, a lot of kind of lower level plotting changes that we make to kind of make things a little bit faster and, and so on. I, I can't say enough, though, that the big story for visualization for me, I mean, after we've added a lot of really cool new plots. There's the stats stuff. There's um, the signal processing, thermophysical data. This is the visualization more page, which walks you through all this stuff. Annotations are really fundamental. This stuff just really kind of makes it really possible for you to do a lot more with the existing Maple visualizations that you do have. Uh, but from there, I think the most fundamental one is, is certainly this one at the end of the list here, is the plot builder. Being able to generate a wide variety of plots as easily as you can with a plot builder is, is just so fundamental that even if I did talk about it before, I would talk about it again and again just because it's so important and it just makes it so much easier to generate plots as well as to generate the code for plots. So for, for me personally, it's one of those things where I've experimented a lot with a new plot builder and I've discovered options I didn't even know existed or you know, I've, I found new combinations that I can only really do so by messing around and, and playing with this interface. So having an interface to experiment with the plot commands is, is, is monumentous for me. Great. Um, I think that's all the questions we've had submitted. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will go back to my slide deck here and just leave it at the last slide. Uh, we are happy to ask or answer more questions if they do come up. Let me just leave you again with some more details for you for contact. If you do have more questions, info at maplesoft.com. There's lots of more details on maplesoft.com, our home page, and then uh, join any one of our social networks. So our user forum is mapleprimes.com, and then we're on all the following social media sites. So don't be a stranger. Find us there. There's lots of new content that you'll be able to find through these sites. So with that, I think I'll say thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.